at this moment uh, when everybody needs a hit, people in Hollywood are almost religiously, uh, you know, conscientious objectors against reaching the kinds of mass audiences that they once coveted. Um, and we want to run a clip uh, from Roseanne, which uh, reboot the reboot of Roseanne, which is like basically the most successful broadcast reboot and certainly in recent memory um, came out in 2017. Um, let's yeah. let's look at a clip from this and talk about why Hollywood doesn't want to make giant hits anymore. She promised that she would get along, and knowing the both of you, I'm guessing you're the one keeping this feud alive. <laughs> What's up, deplorable? Oh. Yeah, first let's say Grace. Jackie, would you like to take a knee? <laughs> Dear Lord, Thank you for this food and for bringing our son DJ home safe from Syria. But most of all, Lord, thank you for making America great again. Mom, no, it's okay, darling. How could you have voted for him, Roseanne? He talked about jobs, Jackie. He said he'd shake things up. I mean, this might come as a complete shock to you, but we almost lost our house the way things are going. Have you looked at the news? Because now things are worse. Not on the real news. Oh, please! <laughs> so, you know, this came out in 2017. Right. Roseanne's character is a Trump voter and Trump supporter. Her sister Jackie is, you know, wearing a pussy hat, is a Hillary Clinton supporter. Um, yeah, you know, why did this show do so well and why aren't there more of these shows? Um, I don't know. I, I can't answer the second question because it's a giant mystery to me. And there's a, there's a corollary to that also in the feature side. Uh, yeah. And just and, to put the, before you get into it, I'll just uh, read for the people listening with the slide that we just pulled up showing that the first two episodes drew uh, 17.7 million viewers. Uh, the second episode, 18.6 uh, million viewers. The it scored the highest rated day entertainment telecast in six years among adults 18 to 49, and TV's highest rated comedy telecast on any night in three and a half years since uh, September 2014. Yeah, giant, right? I mean, so, um, yeah. Creatively, I'd say it's because that was a family talking about jit that families all across the country were talking about and they were doing it in a funny way. And that is <laughs> that's like, that's it. Just, just put a pin in it. You're done. I'm talking about what people are talking about in a funny way um, and making sure it's funny. Right. Cause it was funny. Um, yeah, that's it. That's that, that's the whole job. That's all you have to do. You don't have to think. I mean, that is hard enough by the way. But that used yeah. to be kind of what show business was supposed to television anyway was supposed to do was to <laughs> kind of bring a funny or a scary version or a heightened version of what you saw outside your window in here um, onto the TV. That's what it was supposed to do. And that's when it was at its best, it was doing that, whether it was telling you a story about, you know, people living in a city or telling you a story, it was a little bit aspirational too. what it was telling you a story about trying to raise your kids and, you know, um, you know, I don't know, rich, Richie, little Richie Petri or something in, mm -hmm. in New Rochelle or whether it's telling you about how how uh, horrible it is to have a stupid meathead hippie son-in-law in your house mm -hmm. eating your food, not get, all that stuff. And it could be really funny. It's just that it's also terrifying um, uh, for the executives because they've been living in, you know, if you drive to work every day in a Prius or a Tesla, listen to NPR and you get there, it's like going to be hard for you to understand what Roseanne's even saying, let alone in that clip, especially let yeah. alone, like, are you allowed to say it? Um, and once you do that, uh, then you're not, once you, once you, what, once you do that, you, you, you're not in a mass media, you're not, you're not going to get a 20 share, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to get a, you're going to get 800,000 people. You're going to get basically a, a very, very elaborate podcast, which is what most, TV is now just a really nicely done podcast. 
Can you take us back? I mean, to, are you expecting? Uh, what, a, yep. Oh no, I was just going to ask: Are you expecting a course correction on that? Just given the massive numbers, something like you know, there's a whole story that we don't have to get into as to why Roseanne got canceled, but the fact that for the brief time that she came back, that it, it was huge. Um, indicates there's a there's an appetite so do you expect some sort of markets you correct you'd think that? you'd think yeah. i mean just this week i think it was just yesterday the day before maybe it was yesterday i don't know uh this week anyway the connors which by the way without her is still a hit yeah yeah um it's i don't know it's not what season it's in it's in like it's i don't know fifth season something like that um it has a now has an output deal i mean it has a second life has a says a has a has a um, syndication deal. It's signed licensing deal signed with Lionsgate, which is a small studio, mm -hmm. and a, uh, the company Debmar Mercury and Tom Werner is one of the people who put it together. He was the original guy behind um, the, the Cosby Show and also Roseanne. Um, and so they're going to sell it to the global distribution, which is you know streaming video on demand and other kinds, all the kinds of rights, cable rights, fast rights, all that stuff. Um, and someone's going to buy it. Probably, net, you know, Netflix is going to want it. Maybe Hulu's going to want it. Maybe all, all these people are going to want it because these shows are popular. Uh, the number one show on Netflix is Suits. Right. And yeah. Suits is a kind of a, I know it has uh, the Duchess of Sussex on it, but right. it also is like a kind of a. And it was originally thing. on like the USA Network. USA Network. It was what they called right. their Blue Sky during their Blue Sky yeah. period, where the shows were kind of light and funny but interesting, but you could yeah. just watch one and then you could go on your way. You know, nobody pays for homework. Um, and so and I, you'd think that they would understand that in the feature business, right? But you remember, like, we've just been through a summer, like, even last summer, when the movie business is back. Yeah. Um, where's the big comedy? Like, there was mm -hmm. there like, used to be like a big Ben Stiller comedy and a Will Ferrell comedy. It'd be like five or six of those all summer. And some of them were dumb and died, mm -hmm. and some of them were great. And and the people talked about them for they dressed as those characters. Mm -hmm. And how how many Ron Burgundies were there at Halloween right. after Anchorman came out? Um, so Barbie doesn't scratch that itch. A little bit, but you know, we yeah. the reason we talked about Barbie so much is because there was only Barbie, and also Barbie's kind of right. artsy, you know, has a has yeah. an idea behind it. There was no idea behind so, Anchorman, it was just funny. Can I ask, is it a um is it a failure of imagination on the part of the studios, uh or and lower, you know, the creators who, you know, ultimately um, you know, release their stuff through the system? Um or, it, you know, I mean, is is that just what it comes down to? Because, you know, it seems Roseanne shows this uh, various movies, you know, Top Gun Maverick, which I personally thought was horrible. Did you didn't like Maverick? I tested it even more than the original one. But uh, what the hell? What's your problem? Reasons, I got a lot of problems, Rob. You do, you know? yeah. But, this uh, is something for no, our, ne our uh, next session. Mostly with the, uh, I have a lot of problems with, uh, you know, a movie with America. that is about the is about the enemy, but it can't be named. Is it Iran? Is it Russia? Is it China? Is it you China? Know, office stand? Who knows, <laughs> right? It's like you know, it's a shadowy republic, breakaway <laughs> republic. I don't know, you know, but no, but um, is it? I mean, so it's not that the audience, it's not that the mass audience has disappeared. It's that nobody is interested in reaching yeah. the mass audience. Yeah, well, they're terrified of them. They're terrified of them. The mass and, audience. If you're in show business, you think when somebody says the mass audience, all you can think of is those people at those Trump rallies. People who believe that John F. Kennedy is alive, that they that they think yeah. that Bill Gates is inside the vaccine, um, yeah, that's what you think. Instead of thinking that, well, just make it funny, just make it funny or scary. That you don't have to. It. It. it, it I have a, a small answer for you, and I then have a like a big yeah. think answer, which you can you know take out later if you think it sounds too crazy. Yeah, we don't My, want to insult our audience. Right. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, the small answer is that um, the really for the first time the people making tv and movies don't really like tv and movies they kind of begrudgingly think it's a kind of okay but it's a little bit i don't know really like you're all going to line up at, to a movie with robot you know uh, robots come from outer space or really you're going to go see you know the 
the Connor's living room is fake, right? You know that. Like nobody enters and leaves the room with a joke. That doesn't happen. Like, this is a little, a little too good, a little too smart, uh, too cool for school, really. And that's usually what you can tell. We used to say that about uh, when I was doing half hour comedy in front of an audience, that there's a certain discipline to that. Like the audience, you can't make the audience laugh at something that's not funny. Like as much as you want to so that you can go home, you can't. So if you write a joke and you leave, it stays there the whole week and the audience doesn't laugh, you got to cut the joke because they didn't laugh because it died. Um, but if you're shooting single camera with no audience there, you could just say, well, I wasn't going for a laugh there. I was going for some kind of whimsical, light whimsy, something quirky, and then moving on. We used to say about people who did the single camera shows is the great thing about those is you get to go home at 5.15. Like you don't have to stay late because what the hell? There's no audience there. Mm -hmm. um, there's no market, in other words, right? So there's that. They're too cool for school. But there's also kind of a larger issue culturally, which is, this is going too far, so, you know, which is that we kind of, I mean, I, I try to work this out, this theory. I think it's brilliant, so I'm kind of hoping that it's brilliant, but it may just be dumb. So this is your uh, focus you'll group. You'll tell here. by whether or not we laugh. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, the smart people at the top of all of the big American industries, or world industries, really, smart people in general, have just entered this age of blunder where smart people are doing just insanely dumb things that they should know better because they're just too smart. I mean, it takes smart people to invade Iraq. Dumb people wouldn't do it. It takes smart people to build entire financial models around whether somebody in Riverside County can afford to pay the mortgage on five houses at once. Only a smart person could come up with that. A dumb person would never do that. It takes a smart person to say, we're going to close all the schools and all the businesses because we figured out COVID and would tell you how it's going to work. Only a smart person would do that. Uh, only a smart person, I think, would invade Ukraine. No, no, Putin's not dumb. He's just like we sit in this age of like only a smart person would buy Twitter and change its name to X. Right. Like you have to be smart to be really stupid. And so only the smart people who are running Netflix, who are the smartest people from Silicon Valley, only they could make mistakes this like colossally dumb. Only Bob Iger could add pieces to a business that where the pieces don't belong. So that means tomorrow morning we're going to wake up and Anthony Fauci has been named the new head of Disney, right? Well, and it would Cuomo be in the yeah. operation. Arm. Well, notice how all those people yeah. tend to like support each other. Cause like, <laughs> right. You know, like, well, you know, it's, it's hard. Like we're, we're really smart. We're the smart people. Can Only I, smart, you know, I, I think this is pretty good theory, right? right. I, I like that theory a the lot. Age the Age of Blunder. Of blunder. That was an excerpt of our Reason live stream with Rob Long talking about the Writers Guild strike and the SAG after strikes. If you want to watch another excerpt, go here. And if you want to watch the whole thing, go here. And make sure to come back next Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern time when Reason's live stream will be talking with somebody who's very interesting saying stuff that you definitely want to hear.